I get stereotyped as the negative guy. I'm the only guy that seemingly has a pair at the moment. We started this because we want Liverpool Football Club to do what we've all been raised and told that we exist for. We were brought up on winning. Winning. What's so ugly about saying that now? We're not asking for what is impossible. Liverpool fans aren't deluded. They don't want a billion quid spent in the summer. Every possible avenue needs to be explored to make us the best we can be on the pitch. And they do 80% of it. This video is sponsored by Surfshark, the best VPN on the market. Surfshark is an app or browser extension that allows you to change your location to access websites in other countries and keep you safe and secure from hackers. Using Surfshark, we here in Ireland can access other countries' Netflix libraries or other streaming platforms like The Zone in Spain for all those important Premier League games. Surfshark keeps you safe and private by protecting everything you do online. Everything. When your device connects to the internet, all that information is, in a way, blurred out. Surfshark is particularly useful for keeping you safe from being hacked if you use public Wi-Fi. Let's say you're in a cafe, you're a college, you're out and about, they've got you covered. Surfshark allows you to use one subscription on unlimited devices, meaning you can share your account with friends or family or that neighbour who's a little bit cheap. On top of all of this, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can also upgrade to Surfshark 1, which includes the VPN, an alert system for breaches related to your data, such as emails and credit cards, and an antivirus software for your desktop. Our sign-up offer gives you Surfshark VPN for a little over €2 Euro a month. Simply scan the QR code on screen right now or use the link in the description and enter the code Anfield Agenda at checkout. The real question that we all have is, when are we going to actually get going, right? Because that's the question we're all waiting for at the minute. And I'm sorry, but i got to call out the journalists again. I'm going to read something out to you and I want to know your take on it because for me this is absolutely embarrassing stuff. So this is from Ian Doyle of The Echo. Now, I have a bit of a gripe with The Echo for a whole host of reasons. One, they're crap. Two, they're clickbait. And three, they've never, ever, ever, ever even acknowledged the existence of our channel. So I'm going to have a little go at Ian Doyle here because this is the type of Kool-Aid drinking, soup taking, pussy footing around nonsense that we have to stomach as Liverpool fans. A new centre-back is at present not an immediate priority, according to Ian Doyle. Liverpool believe other areas of the squad, other than centre-back, require more immediate reinforcement. And then he goes on with, Lenny Arrow is seen as separate to Liverpool's expected business. Let me say this very clearly. If Ian Doyle, anybody else at the Echo, or any other journalist that covers Liverpool believes for one damn second that we don't need to prioritise a centre-back, you're a fool. Simple as that. I don't care what nonsense they're getting told. If you haven't got the backbone as a journalist to come out and call it as it is, then I'm here to do your fucking job for you. Because Liverpool desperately need a centre-back. Liverpool needed a centre-back last season, and we didn't get one. So to go into this summer and try to tell us, the rational, fairly intelligent Liverpool fan base, that we're expected to believe a centre-back isn't a priority, is nothing short of embarrassing. Call yourself a journalist, and you're trying to pawn off that shite on the rest of us. Do your job. Do your damn job and stop taking the soup. Call the ownership out if they're not willing to spend. Because we don't want another summer where we're being set up for underwhelming failures again. We don't want another summer where we're outspent and are supposed to think we can go and win the league. We need a centre-back, minimum of one. We need a defensive midfielder. And you don't even need to listen to me about this. Because these same clowns said we need a centre-back all the way through. They said we were going to look for centre-backs at the end of the season. Now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden we're all supposed to believe that, oh, we're sound. We're sound at centre-back because our 32-year-old and the two young lads, well, they've got us covered. It's not like we're going into a season where there's extra games because of a bigger Champions League. Oh, wait. It's not like we're going into a season where the AFCON's been moved back into December. Oh, wait. 
It's not like we're going into a season after a shortened summer window. Oh. Hmm. It's almost like you think we're idiots. Do you trust the process? Is the question that Connor has asked tonight. I.e. will Liverpool do good business this summer? 53% of you trust the process. I trust Michael Edwards. I absolutely do trust Michael Edwards. What I don't trust is this nonsense. That we're supposed to just be grateful for what we have. No. We had deficiencies in our squad. They need to be addressed. On this trust the process stuff, I do. I do trust that Michael Edwards will get business done. I do trust that Richard Hughes and RNA Slot are in conversation and are looking over it. What I don't trust is the media. Because, as I've said from the start of this summer, they're all brilliant at telling us who we don't want. But nobody has a clue who we do want. So, here's a question for you. How are we, as Joe Public... Supposed to believe journalists that blatantly look us in the eye and lie to us. So, let me just spell one thing out from the start tonight. And I want to just get this point across because I feel like it needs to be put out. I believe we'll get signings. I believe and trust that Michael Edwards and Richard Hughes will get it done. But what I don't believe in is the owners. What I don't believe in is the amount of money we'll have to spend. But the money we do have to spend, whatever it is, I trust Michael Edwards and I trust Richard Hughes to spend that money wisely and bring in the best they can get with the money available. But that doesn't mean that I'm happy about the amount of money that we may see given. Now, let's look back to last summer as an example, because it doesn't tell us everything, but it gives us a little insight. And The Athletic did a piece where they spoke about what teams need this summer, what we may expect to be spent in the transfer window, and one thing stood out. Last summer, the total spent by Premier League clubs tell a tale. So we had a rebuild, right? A rebuild. And I think most of us would agree it was somewhat successful. The players that were brought in, you could make a valid argument for a lot of them. But that was a rebuild. So a big window. We talked about a 90 million quid net spend being against what we'd done in the past, which was an average of 40. But here's the thing. Our rebuild window still seen us spend the sixth amount of money in the Premier League. Sixth in a rebuild. Chelsea spent £398 million in the last transfer window in the summer. £398 million. Spurs, Spurs spent £213 million. City, £206 million. Arsenal, £201 million. Manchester United, the laughing stock. Haven't got a pal to piss in. They still spent 177 million. Us, our big summer, our rebuild after a catastrophic season, we spent 148 million pound in the summer transfer window. Now this isn't net. This is what we spent. So, how are we supposed to compete when we're spending what less than United, Arsenal, City, Spurs, and Chelsea? And we're supposed to get stronger? And we're already trying to rein in Arsenal and Manchester City? Who, in a quiet summer, for Man City in particular, are still outspending us? Arsenal spent £201 million, And our rebuild cost £148 million. These FSG apologists, these soup takers, these pussies need to call the owners out. Because we have the fucking money. The cheap gits just won't spend it. And all the excuse making in the world. And people who are like, we wear this, we wear that. It's all just waffle. It's all just manipulation yet again. Every goddamn fucking summer, it's the same. Big build up, big build up, big build up, big build up, piss poor execution. Uh, Craig... Even when we won the league, FSG did not upgrade the squad at all. That's why I've always been FSG out. I try so hard to give them credit for the stuff they get right. I do. I truly do. But I, every summer, something happens where Liverpool fans get hoodwinked and accept mediocrity. And you get told you're greedy. You get told you're being unrealistic. But the numbers don't lie. Our opposition are outspending us, window after window. So, what's true? 
We've told we've got a really high wage bill. Okay, well then get rid of Salah. There's 350 grand a week and a million, 100 million brought in. We've got rid of 200 grand a week from Thiago Alcantara and 100 odd grand a week from Matip. Are those savings going into the squad? Are we still crying poor mouth over the fucking wages? Fans need to call this out. The Echo are supposed to represent the city of Liverpool. Yes, it's divided in half between the blue side and the red side. I get that. But if you're a local newspaper, you're supposed to have the interests of the city at heart. Not the interests of your access to the club. Not the interests of blowing smoke up the owner's arse. You're supposed to stand up for the city. You're supposed to call out the crap. You're supposed to grow a pair. Do it! Now I know why we don't get invited to anything at Liverpool. Because we're one of the few people that have a backbone. And ambition. And call out the crap. Imagine telling a set of fans for months about centre-backs we're following. About Lenny Yoro. About all these. And then trying to tell us it's not a priority. You absolute clowns.